In this video, we're going to talk about the assumptions made when fitting a Poisson regression model. Now, these assumptions apply whether we're modeling count data or rate data, and these set of assumptions are very similar to what they were for linear regression and logistic regression. Again, with slight modifications because our outcome is slightly different. It's looking at count data rather than numeric um, outcome or yes-no type outcome. But so the first assumption that's being made is the linearity assumption. So the relationship between the numeric x's and the log rate or the log count is linear. So this was the same assumption we had in linear regression as well as logistic regression that there's a linear relationship between the numeric x's and the left-hand side of the uh, model's equation. And similar to linear regression, we can check this with residual plots. So we can make a very similar set of plots that we did in linear regression and check uh, that assumption that way. The second Assumption is the independence that the y values or the errors are independent. So the y value for person one is not related to the y value for person two, person three, and so on. So this again is the assumption that's in all of these regression models, right? that the outcomes that we've observed are independent of one another. This we do not check statistically. Again, this is a question um, of study design and how the data was collected to know if the um, outcomes are independent or not. The third assumption, if you remember in linear regression, it was that the y values are normally distributed or the errors are normally distributed. In logistic, the y's or the errors were binomial distributed. Okay, here, the y's, right, or the errors, are Poisson distributed. And so again, that the outcome follows a Poisson distribution. And the final assumption, if you remember linear regression, variance was constant around the regression line. For a logistic regression, the errors were not constant, right? They followed a binomial. They were related to the probability of the outcome. So here, four given x values, the mean is equal to the variance, or that the standard deviation is the square root of the mean. So what I mean by that is, for a given set of x values in the model, we can estimate what's the mean or the rate. Maybe I should say mean or rate. What's the rate at which events occur? And the standard deviation is the square root of that rate. So again, variability is not constant. As the rate increases, so does the variability. Now this is one we're gonna talk about um, in the next week's lectures, about checking and addressing. So we'll check uh, the idea of over dispersion or under, under dispersion. If the variability is actually greater than uh, the square root of the mean, that's called over dispersion. We'll talk about when that happens, why it can happen, and ways we can address that. Okay, but so once again, the set of assumptions we're making when fitting this regression model are pretty much the same as they were for the other models with slight adjustments um, based on the exact type of data that we're working with. Stick around guys, there's more to see and please stay safe.